Hello, my name is Frank Walsh and welcome back to Workflow Walkthrough. You know, a lot of people have become convinced of the merits of shooting raw, which are all true. You have more flexibility and more, more ability to modify your images after the fact with better results. But frankly, most of them don't really want to deal with raw photos. They don't want to develop. What they want is they want the photo to come out of the raw processor looking the way their camera made it look using their special presets or their film simulations or their vivid look and then they want that ability to tweak it if they need to. Well, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do with Darktable, but that's where styles come in and that's what we're going to talk about today. Styles in Darktable allow you to apply a predefined set of adjustments to your images. And there are a lot of styles that have been developed that emulate many of the in-camera settings that modern cameras are equipped with. Fuji film simulations, uh, vivid color settings, black and white settings, monochrome, etc. Styles are found in two different places in Darktable. The first place you can find styles is on the right side of your uh, light table view here under the styles menu. And the styles menu will show you all the styles that you currently have installed on your system. And if you have an image selected in the light table, you can pick one of those styles. For example, Olympus Vivid. And in fact, by hitting the apply button, it will automatically apply those adjustments to the currently selected image in light table. So let's do that. And we can see the thumbnail change. And now if I go into my darkroom view, I can see that from the base adjustments that are made by dark table, which goes up to highlight reconstruction, the preset has applied the base curve. It has applied some local contrast. It has used the contrast, brightness, and saturation adjustment, as well as an RGB curve and a sharpen. Let's take a look at each of those. So when we go into the base curve, we see that a base curve has been created and uh, applied to the image to boost the midtones. Taking a look at local contrast, the local contrast setting is the default 125%, 50% highlights, 50% shadows, no changes from the defaults there. Contrast brightness and saturation adjustment has been tweaked just a little bit on the saturation, plus uh, 0 0.05, quite a small adjustment there. RGB curve, so we can see that a very subtle S curve has been applied to the images with basically raising the 50% the midpoint and dropping the shadows down uh, just uh, uh, also a little bit. And then finally, uh, default sharpening is applied with a radius of 2 and an amount of 0.5. And this is going to give you something that uh, approximates what comes out of your camera JPEG. Now I said there's two ways to apply styles, and the first one was from the light table. We'll find out where the second place is. I'm going to go back here to the highlight reconstruction module and compress my history stack to get rid of the adjustments. And now I have my default image, and the other place that I can apply styles to images is through this button down here in the darkroom view it says quick access for applying any of your styles. If I click this, I'm going to get a list of the styles that I have installed once again. And rather than Olympus Vivid this time, let's go for uh, Fuji Classic Chrome. So I'll apply Fuji, Fuji Classic Chrome. And I see that Fuji Classic Chrome actually uses a number of adjustments that were not applied in the Olympus default, right? So after highlight reconstruction, we have the base curve, which is actually disabled. We've used the color lookup table, the input color profile, and the tone curve. So in the color lookup table, we can see that some adjustments have been made to the blue-yellow balance, and the saturation has been increased. If we look at the input color profile, uh, we can see that standard color matrix linear RGB uh, have been selected. I'm not sure if that's different than the, than the standard input color profile or not. I don't think so. And then if we look at the tone curve adjustment, we can see that a rather aggressive uh, tone curve has been applied where we've increased the uh, mid-tone brightness quite a bit and and decrease the uh, low end brightness now they have this is an older style it doesn't use the rgb tone curve it uses the standard tone curve uh, and if i look at uh, lab independent channels 
I see that they haven't made any adjustments in, in lab independent channels. They've only used the RGB linked link channels. So that is how you apply those. And of course, you can automatically apply any style that you have to your images automatically on input based on your camera type. Uh, what you can't do, at least to the best of my knowledge, is you can't look up in the raw data what style you were shooting with in camera and have the and have Darktable automatically select the appropriate style to apply to emulate that. If that's possible to do, maybe somebody can correct me in the comments. But as far as I know, it's not. So let's go back here and reset this again and take a look at some of these other styles. So a lot of people like to use film simulations. So, you know, if I want to emu emulate Ilford HP4, I can apply that and it's going to give me a channel mixer. And that's all it's really doing in this case is applying the channel mixer, which if I look at the gray channel is giving me just slight variations between red, green, and, and blue based on the responses of the Ilford film to red, green, and, and blue light. Let's go back and compress this and take a look at some other styles. If I take a look at uh, Portra 400, again, we're just applying a tone curve here. Nothing else has really been, been done to the image. Uh, and that tone curve is desaturating and boosting the midtones. And if we look at the, in this case, it's been applied to independent channels. So based on the color responsiveness of uh, Portra, somebody has created a tone curve that boosts the blues, pulls down the yellows, pulls down the greens, and, and boosts the reds a little bit. And of course, on, and then on the lightness, it in, increases the lightness in the midtones and and slightly washes out the shadows, which is, is pretty characteristic of Portra, and pulls down the highlights so they'll never quite blow out. Again, pretty characteristic of, of film. Now, you know, your mileage may vary if you think this is a good simulation or not, but if you're using in-camera simulations, this is a way that you can uh, get those pretty quickly. So it might be fair to ask, well, where do I get these, these styles, and how do I get them to be available in this menu? So let's take a look at that next. Okay, styles for Darktable are available from a number of sources. And if you go into Google and, and search for DT styles or your favorite search engine, you'll get a couple of hits that come right off the top that have a lot of styles. First one is called dtstyles.net, and the second one is a GitHub collection of styles. First, let's take a look at DT styles. DT Styles is interesting because DT Styles shows you four different types of original images across the top. And then as you scroll through this long, long list of styles, you'll see a teal and orange style, for example, and it'll show you what the style will do to those same images if it was applied. So it's a nice way to get a comparison between before and after what your image looks like uh, in neutral conditions and what it'll look like after the, the style is applied. Now, I really like this approach, and this is a great resource for a large number of styles. However, it is really difficult to find anything here. There's no search functionality. There's no way for me to look for Olympus or Fujifilm or even Kodak. Uh, I could sort by name, but that's not very helpful. To be honest, because a lot of them are named, you know, film emulation, Portra, or Polaroid 690. But then there might be another one that's called Polaroid 690 film emulation. And if you sort alphabetically, that doesn't really help you very much at all. So what you find is you have to scroll through this. And here's, for instance, an Olympus OMD EM52 vivid setting, uh, which is this setting here. And I've already downloaded that. Uh, here's a skin retouch setting. There's a lot of settings in here. Some of them are going to match your camera's built-in settings. So you could basically have to scroll through this and look. Some of them are very well done. Some of them are less well done. But it is a source. The second on GitHub, in my opinion, is a lot more useful uh, as far as being able to search, but a lot less interesting and a lot more difficult to know what the style is going to do when you apply it. But it is a hierarchical 
listing of styles. You have AGFA simulations, some traditional black and white, uh, some specific color styles, creative styles, filmic styles. Here are Fuji, Ilford Kodak, Polaroid, Rolly. So let's say you have a Fuji camera and you're interested in some of the Fuji film simulations. So if we go in here into Fuji, we're going to find a number of different Fuji film simulations that we can use and apply. So we have Provia, we have Neopan, we have Superia, we have Velvia. So let's say we want Velvia. All right. So we find the Velvia, let's say Velvia 50 style. And if you have X-Trans sensors, there's specific styles in here that are for X-Trans sensors that do different things because uh, the X-Trans sensor does work differently. But let's take a look at this Velvia 50 style. All right, so this is what the style looks like, but I'm just going to go ahead and download the style and then I'll show you how to install it. When you're in the GitHub library of styles, these are intended to be downloaded as packages and installed in Darktable in a way that they'll appear hierarchically in the list. You can see that you can download some individual zip files of packages. So uh, each of the folders up here is available as an individual download or you can download everything. It says click here on the releases tab to access the downloadable zip file. So if I click here I get a little bit of a different list and here I can see I have Fuji file. So if I download this uh, Fuji zip file I'm then going to have that available. And if I unzip that file I'll see that I have a full list, a, a full complement of all of the Fuji styles that are available in, in the GitHub library. These are all very small files. They don't take up a lot of room on your computer. They're 4K each, so you don't need to worry about that. <clears throat> now I can install one or all of these into Darktable if I want, and I'll show you how to do that next. All right, I'll switch back to Darktable, and I'm in my Lighttable view. And in the Styles menu over here, I see I have create, edit, remove, import, export, or apply. So create, edit, obviously you can create your own styles. Save any series of adjustments you want and make them into a style. But you can also import styles. So I'm going to go ahead and click import. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder and into Fuji. And uh, we had said we wanted the uh, Velvia. Let's sort this by name. and Velvia 50. And we'll go ahead and open Velvia 50. And I now have a Fuji folder here with Velvia 50 underneath it. So let's go ahead and apply that. All right, now here we are in Darkroom and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to apply my new Fuji Velvia 50 style. And there we go. So what has it done? It's put a color lookup table module a white balance module and a tone curve module. So let's take a look at those. Color lookup table. Uh, it's pulled the lightness down and it's changed the, shifted the reds a little bit, shifted to the blue a little bit, and actually pulled the saturation down a little bit. So that's the adjustment that was made there. It's also applied a white balance adjustment. Let's take a look at that white balance adjustment. So it's changed the temperature from the camera setting. It's increased the tint slightly. And finally, let's take a look at the tone curve to see what we've done here in the tone curve. And again, we've got RGB link channels. So the, all they've basically done here is pulled down the shadows and pretty much left the, the highlights alone. So that is the Velvia 50 film simulation style applied, downloaded, installed, and applied. So let's say that you've decided that the Fuji Classic Chrome is the look that you want to start with with all of your images. What do you do next to make sure that that's applied on import? Well, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is make sure that your settings are set so that on import there is no processing applied. So rather than scene referred, you would switch to none. That way it's not going to turn on the base curve. It's not going to turn on filmic. It's not going to adjust the exposure. It's basically just going to bring in the raw file alone. Most of these styles 
have been set up so that they turn on the required modules to achieve the look that is required. So you would set, set that to none. The second thing you need to do is you need to create a preset. Now the preset is going to have to be for all the modules that are enabled by the style that you have. So for instance in Fuji Classic Chrome if I hover over it it tells me that the color lookup table is on, tone curve is on, input color profile is on, and base curve is off. So I need to create presets for all of those. I don't need to worry about base curve since it's off, but I need to create presets for color lookup table, tone curve, and input color profile. And I'll show you how to do that next. I'm going to go into the darkroom. So in the darkroom, I see that the tone curve module, for instance, has been adjusted for this look. And I'm going to come over here to the presets and I'm going to say store a new preset. In this case I'll call it Fuji Chrome and then I'll say auto apply this preset to matching images. That way uh, when I can say I only want this applied when I'm importing images from a certain camera, say my Olympus camera or my Fuji camera. So I can come into Maker and say Fuji And any time I import from a Fuji camera, it will apply this preset. And I'll say OK. Now I would do the same thing for input color profile. Last but not least, the color lookup table, do the same thing. Now what will happen is anytime I import a file into Darktable from a camera where the make is defined as Fuji, it'll automatically apply the Fuji Chrome look. This is not something that I would do. Uh, it's easier for me to just determine which of the presets I want to apply after the image is already imported. But for some people, they want the simplest, most direct method possible. And they always want to have the same look. So that's how you'd go about doing that. I hope this was useful. Thanks for joining me today. Go out there and make pictures.